All right, so this lead code question is called count primes. It says count the number of prime numbers less than a non-negative number n. So their example is the input of 10 and the output of four because there are four prime numbers less than 10. They are two, three, five, and seven. All right, so we'll solve this problem using something called the sieve of Eratosthenes. It sounds pretty complicated, but it's really not. Just think of it this way. Usually when you try to determine if a number is a prime number, you do it by dividing. So let's say the number is seven. Is that a prime? You divide it by two. Is it evenly divisible by that? No. Is it evenly divisible by three? No, four, no, five. So at the end, you decide that it's a prime number because it's not evenly divisible by anything. The sieve of Eratosthenes goes the opposite route. What it does is it eliminates the multiples of a number, and then it goes on to the next number and eliminates those. And at the very end, all you have to do is count up how many numbers are left. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll start with the number two. We need to eliminate all multiples of two. What's a multiple of two? Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Those are definitely not primes because they're a multiple of something. So those are gone right off the bat. Now let's move to the next number, the number three. We can eliminate all of its multiples. So what's a multiple of three? Six, which is already eliminated. Nine, 12, which is also already eliminated. 15 and 18, another number that's already eliminated. So now look at what's left. What we have left are, by definition, numbers that are not multiples of something. So these are the prime numbers. So now all we have to do is count how many numbers are remaining. We don't start with the number one because that's not a prime, but here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so what we've done already is great, but let's make it a little more efficient. So what we have here are the numbers that have been eliminated after I've checked the multiples of two and three. I have not checked the multiples of four yet, but we actually don't have to check the multiples of four. How do we know that? Because the number four has already been eliminated when I checked the multiples of two. So how can we prove that if a number has already been eliminated, we don't have to check its multiples because they have already been eliminated? Well, let's just think about what a multiple is. A multiple is just made up of other numbers. So the number four is two times two. That's why it was eliminated when we checked the multiples of two. What's another multiple of four? Eight. All eight is, is two times two times two. So this was also eliminated when we checked the number two. Let's go to the next multiple of four, 12. This is two times two times three. So this one would also have been eliminated when we checked the multiples of two. It also would have been eliminated when we checked the multiples of three, but that's not relevant right now. Let's just do one more check, the number 16. What's that? It's two times two times two times two. So again, with the number 16, it's made up of at least one number two. So it would have been eliminated when we check the multiples of two. So again, I'll repeat it. If we come across a number that has already been eliminated, like the number four, we do not have to check any of its multiples because they have already been eliminated by something that came before the eliminated number. You know what, let's just be excessive. Let's go with the number six to prove this out once and for all. The number six has already been eliminated, so we don't have to check any of its multiples, but let's do it anyway. Six is made up of three and two. So this would have been eliminated either with the check of the multiples of two or the multiples of three. Let's go to another multiple of six, 12. 
12 is 2 times 2 times 3. So that would have been eliminated with either of those checks. Finally, 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. So again, that would have been eliminated by either the check of 2 or 3. All right, so how do we actually use the sieve of Eratosthenes to figure out an implementation for our problem? So remember the question is asking, how many prime numbers are less than our n? In this case, we'll say that n is 10. So how many prime numbers are there that are less than 10? So what we'll do is we'll create an array of n trues n is 10, so we need an array of 10 trues. True, meaning it's true that this is a prime number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we start with the assumption that everything is a prime number. Now what we do is we start with the number 2, and we flip all of its multiples to false. So 4 is now false, 6 is now false, and 8 is now false. Then we move to the next number, the number 3. Let's flip all of its multiples to false. 6 is a multiple of 3, that's already false, so we just go to its next multiple, which is the number 9, and make that false. Now we'll just go to the next number, the number 4. As we can see, the number 4 is already false, so we don't actually have to check any of its multiples based on what we proved before. Any multiples of a number that has already been eliminated don't need to be checked because they have already been eliminated. So now the final step is we just need to count the number of trues that are left. Remember that the numbers 0 and 1 are not prime, so again we start at the number 2. So what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4 prime numbers. Alright, so let's code this out. What lead code has given us is the function called count primes, which accepts n. So what we have to do, remember, is find how many prime numbers are less than n. So, first thing we're going to do is create our array. So let nums equals an empty array. Remember this is the array that we're going to initially set all values to true and then one by one change the non-primes to false and then at the end count the number of primes. Speaking of that, we need a variable to keep track of the count of primes. So let prime count and we'll instantiate that to zero. So, so far, this is where we are, just an empty array. So now we're gonna have to fill this array with n number of trues. So for let i equal zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. We're gonna set every value in it to true. That'll look like this. Ten troops. And just so we know what number we're on, I'll put the index below it. All right, sorry about the messy handwriting. Okay, so now we're going to start at the number two and eliminate all of its multiples. So for let i equal two, and we'll stop when i times i is no longer less than n. And we'll quickly prove that. Let's say we start at the number two, so i is two. What's two times two? Four, that would only bring us to this number. We need to get to the number nine. So let's get rid of that. All right, so now i is three. What's three times three? Three times three is the number nine, which is the last number in our array. 
so we can stop here. Because if we try to go one further, what's four times four? Four times four is 16. We'd be past the last element in our array. All right, I just noticed that I forgot the second I. We'll finish off this for loop. Okay, so right now we are here. All right, the first thing we have to do is we have to check to see if the number we're on has already been turned to false. Because remember, if it has, we can just skip that number because all of the multiples of any element that's already false are also false. All right, so now let's get all the multiples of the number we're on, which is the number two. So four, let j equal two. We'll stop when j times i is no longer less than n, same reason as before. We'll do j plus plus. So just to make it clear, the outer for loop is gonna go over the elements in the array. So it's gonna start out as two, then it's gonna become three, then it's gonna become four. This inner for loop is gonna get the multiples of that element. So this inner for loop is getting all the multiples of two. And then once the outer for loop is at three, the inner for loop is gonna get all the multiples of three. And remember what we have to do now is set all of the multiples of the number we're on to false. All right, so that would complete that. So since we started at the number two, let's just show what has happened so far. It's changed this to false, this to false, and this to false. Then the outer for loop went to the number three, and then the inner for loop changed all of its multiples to false. So the number six, which is already false, and the number nine, which is now false. So now all we have to do is we have to look at this array and count any element that's still true starting at the number two. So how many elements are still true, meaning still prime? We have one, two, three, and four. That would look like this, four, let i equal to i is less than n, i plus plus. So we'll just check every number in the array starting at two. So if nums i equals true, so if it's still a prime, then we'll just add that to the prime count total. So at this point, prime count is four. So what's left to do? All we have to do is return prime count. All right, let's see how we did. Looks good, let's submit it. All right, our answer was accepted. So our solution was faster than about 85% of JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.